So what do we mean by technology? Hi, welcome to TOK Today. Exploration of many of the knowledge questions in the knowledge and technology optional unit seem to start with the question, well, what do we mean by technology? So I thought that in this series on technology, we should start with a video on different ways of thinking about technology. That's different perspectives on technology. So in this video, I'm going to summarize four main approaches um, to how we could think about technology in TOK. Uh, these approaches are very much umbrella approaches. They're rough, ideal type models. And there is some philosophy behind them, but I'm not going to get into the philosophy in any great detail. TOK is not a philosophy course. And equally, um, I'm not going to get into all the different possible variations in each of the umbrella models. I'm going to try to get this video in under 10 minutes. So it's going to be slightly limited by those things. Before we get into it, um, I would love it if you would give me a subscribe, a like, a share, or a comment so that we can keep growing this TOK learning space. Okay, let's go. The first approach is the technology is tool approach, or tech is tool approach, as I call it. The argument here is quite simply that technology is a tool that, uh, that we use to solve human problems. Uh, this is obvious when we look at modern technologies such as the internet, cars, the printing press. It then also becomes apparent that when we consider technologies from pre-industrial eras such as smelting metals and wattle and daub and things like that, they're also technologies. This approach quickly takes us into the non-physical technologies such as mathematics uh, as a technology which allowed us to solve the problem of navigation through map making and art as a technology which allows us to solve problems of expression and social cohesion, etc. Arguably, language is the ultimate technology which allows for all other technological and therefore knowledge innovation. And this approach has been very well explained in much of the literature, particularly by the books by Yuval Noah Harari, particularly Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind. Now, among the many writers who've taken the tech is tool approach are Plato and Rousseau, who both argued that technology had a rather negative effect on knowledge and humanity. In Phaedrius, Plato argues that the use of writing has a negative impact on people's ability to remember and think critically. Jean-Jacques Rousseau who wrote about the dangers of technological progress in his work, Discourse on Inequality, and he argued that the development of technology had led to the development of private property, which in turn leads to social inequality. But then on the other hand, we've got people like Francis Bacon and surprisingly Karl Marx, who take a very positive approach to the tech is tool approach in technology. They see technology as having a positive benefit in the pursuit of knowledge and the development of humanity. Uh, Bacon saw science and technology as being a single unified entity, and he argued that science was the best way to uncover universal ordered truths in a chaotic and disordered world. And Marx saw technology as a means by which proletarian labour and bourgeois extraction of it could be quantified and therefore it's a necessary stage for the realisation of socialism. As such, Marx was very positive about the influence of technology on the pursuit of knowledge. Now, I think that the tech is tool approach is implied and assumed in the knowledge questions included in the TOC study guide for knowledge and technology. Uh, this approach may be all that's required of the TOK learner. However, there are some concerns with this approach, concerns which are both general for us as learners and specific to TOK. So, the first concern is, did these problems which technology apparently solves come before technology or did technology create these problems? The problem here is one of causation. What's the order of causation? And what's the cause of an object? And if the problems are antecedent to the technology, and the technology is the solution to them, then are the technology and the knowledge actually separate entities? We'll come on to that in a lot more detail later. And if technology and knowledge are intertwined, then is there any non-technological knowledge? There's a wider ontological problem here arising from 
those earlier problems, that if knowledge is a requisite for existence, then is technology also a requisite for our existence? Are we defined by solving problems? Is consciousness essentially a task-focused process? And we get into Heidegger, and we will get into Heidegger later. Concerns number one and two there conveniently segue into our second approach, which is that some knowledge is tech approach. This approach argues that the knowledge which gives rise to the technology developed to solve the problems that we face is in itself technology. Knowledge such as language, including digital coding languages, religion, scientific theories, artistic arrangements, etc., all give rise to specific technologies which help us to solve a set of problems. And in this approach, we start to understand technology as a set of practices rather than merely as a set of objects. Both the object, the artifact, and the practices, the processes, are seen as being technology. The object itself may be termed instrumentality, as it was produced to instrumentally change the environment, i.e. to solve a problem, and the practices which brought the artefact into being might be termed productivity, as they gave us an object which at some point gave us increased control of our environment for a required purpose. The effect of this categorization on the acquisition and the production of knowledge will be explored in greater detail in the subsequent videos in this technology series. This approach also opens the door to a greater consideration of the social environment which gave rise to the needs which the technology is trying to solve. Of course, this brings a sharp focus on what we define as needs and who has the attendant power to solve what they define as needs. So a quick sub-question here is that a lot of technology serves improvement. Is improvement fulfillment of a need? And again, we have significant problems of causation here. What's the order of causation? Is causation a necessary or merely sufficient requirement for the acquisition and the production and pursuit of knowledge, etc.? So overall, this some knowledge is tech approach um, poses a number of challenges for our theory of knowledge. Firstly, is the technology causal to the knowledge or vice versa? When you start to think about examples, this becomes more problematic than it first appears. So secondly, both knowledge and technology can be thought of as evolutionary and sometimes even revolutionary. So does knowledge cause technology to evolve or does technology cause the knowledge to evolve? And if so, how? And under what conditions is it just evolution? And under what conditions does it become revolution? And do we produce some knowledge which does not solve problems, i.e. are we just knowledge producing animals? And if we do produce some knowledge which doesn't solve problems, why do we produce that knowledge? So there's also a range of ontological questions here. You know, again, are we solely problem-solving beings? What about non-problem-solving behaviours? What is the big problem that we're trying to solve? And is consciousness contingent on that? They're a little bit further away from TOK, but we'll come back to those later. Okay, now we get to our third approach of what is technology, and this is the all knowledge is technology approach. So if we accept that technology is a tool to solve problems and that we accept that that which is known about the world is acquired, pursued and produced to solve problems, then we arrive at the position that all knowledge is technology. Conversely, all technology is knowledge. However, this is a bit more obvious and a little less overwhelming. So this approach gives rise to some very significant challenges, particularly for us in TOK. The first challenge is, is there any knowledge which is not technology? And we can unpack the question by positioning problems as time, person and situation specific. That is that we know things, but we may not be using them to solve a problem at that moment in time. Someone somewhere else may have used that knowledge to solve a problem earlier. And once created, the knowledge has been passed on to me. And this gives rise to a second problem. 
Why do we have knowledge which does not solve problems for us? If we accept that all knowledge can be categorised as technology and that technology solves problems for us, then why do we know things which don't solve problems for us? And finally, our now familiar ontological questions are now even stronger. If all knowledge is technology and knowledge is a necessary requirement for existence, then this approach inevitably leads to the position that being human is being technology, or to put it another way, that a human being is technology itself. And so we conveniently segue into our final approach. The final approach is the we are the technology unified being approach. Okay, so now we need to work a little bit outside of the realms of conventional TOK, but only to give us better ways to explore some of the TOK knowledge questions, um, particularly the ones to do with things like artificial intelligence and cyborgs and stuff like that. Some writers have argued that our very existence, our very human being, is one and the same as technology. Put simply, we are technology. And this approach, as the culmination of the three earlier approaches, aggregates those arguments to posit our beingness as constituting a problem-solving set of processes. This is often characterised as consciousness. The idea that consciousness is a referenced intention in the world. This approach really helps us to start to answer the questions about the role of technology in changing our pursuit of knowledge. Rather than tech merely improving or impeding in our pursuit of knowledge, technology actually reveals the world and therefore is our very consciousness, our very awareness of the world. It neither improves nor impedes, but in its role as revelation is consciousness itself. And this will really help us when we get to questions concerning artificial intelligence and the biological integration of technology. However, like the other three approaches, this approach poses some significant challenges for our understanding of the role of technology in the pursuit of knowledge. Number one, ethical issues. If tech and being human are one and the same, but there is unequal access to technology, then there's unequal access to the experience of being a human being. Number two, there are continuum issues. Where does the individuality of the knower end and the external universality of technology begin. And number three, categorization and organization problems. Why do we bother to have a separate category of technology and a separate category of knowledge if they're one and the same thing? Hold up, this has got nothing to do with TOK, I hear you cry. Some of these points above appear to be way beyond the scope of TOK. You're totally overcomplicating things. We don't need to talk about ontology and the nature of existence and the requisite conditions for existence and the nature of con consciousness. We're going well beyond the requirements of the TOK course. However, I believe that we can only tackle some of the technology knowledge questions by considering some of those questions, which might conventionally be asked by people who we label as existentialists or phenomenologists and ontologists. And this will become far clearer in the third video that I make on artificial intelligence. Coming up soon. Hold up again, I hear you cry. Your four approaches are all based on one premise. That one premise being that technology is a tool to solve a problem. And yes, you would be right. This is a legitimate challenge to the framework outlined here. An equally valid approach would be to start from an, uh, from an entirely different premise. And maybe that technology is not caused by problem solving. So you could start to argue maybe that technology is caused by and defined by something entirely different. However, that's a big undertaking and maybe not one that we need to explore in this video, but to leave for a later date. Let's move on to closing thoughts. We can use these definitions to help us to start to explore some of the knowledge questions in the TOK optional theme, Knowledge and Technology. In the coming weeks, there will be three videos 
uh, and blog posts on these following questions. Number one, how does technology change our pursuit of knowledge? Number two, is artificial intelligence changing our understanding of knowledge? And number three, what are the ethical issues around technology? Those blogs are coming up in the next few weeks. I hope that you can come back and, and read them and access them. Uh, if you enjoyed or found this uh, video useful, then a uh, like, a subscribe, a share, a comment would be super appreciated. All I do is wish you a fantastic, which is a talk day, and say bye.